Retirees living on fixed incomes and those planning to retire soon are the most threatened by soaring inflation. Every dollar they have buys fewer groceries and other household items than a year ago. And those still working are finding their purchasing power dwindling. Good evening and welcome to this month's edition of Rural America Live with AARP. I'm Christina Loren. Tonight, we focus on Rural Money Matters with some familiar faces from AARP here to lead our discussion. And a little bit later on in the show, economist and author Chris Farrell of Minnesota Public Radio will join us to take your calls and answer your questions. You're a big part of this show, 877 283 7570 is the number to call. Pick up the phone and let us know what's on your mind tonight as we continue through this conversation. And our question of the month is, with record inflation, how are you getting by month to month? And we're giving away a cooler to five lucky on-air callers tonight. So pick up the phone and join our conversation. Again, that number is 877-283-7570. And as a friendly reminder, you don't need to be a member of AARP or over the age of 50 to win. You can only win one time though each calendar year. So give us a call. We'd love to hear from you and our phone lines are open right now. Now, if you are a winner, AARP will call you back in the next few days to confirm your mailing address. So be sure to return their call. Now we get to welcome tonight's guest. Joining us from the great state of Iowa is AARP State Director Brad Anderson and from the Sooner State tonight, <laughs> Oklahoma. <cowboy>. That's right. <laughs> AARP State Director and fan favorite Sean Boskell <laughs> joins us tonight. It's great to have you both back on the show with us. Really good, good to be here. here. Important nice. topic we get to celebrate tonight. It's so a big night. That's right. Let's hit the ground running. Brad, older Americans and those already retired, they're feeling the brunt of inflation as it weighs on the economy right now. What is AARP hearing about what is impacting their pocketbooks specifically? How are they taking this right now? Well, anecdotally, I can tell you um, they're struggling, and inflation is a big reason for that. So, as we all know, food prices remain stubbornly high. Um, food pantry usage in Iowa, and especially in the rural parts of the country, uh, are up, and they continue to go up every month. And gas prices, while gas prices have come down a little bit, they're still 20% higher than they were uh, a year ago. So. Obviously, it makes sense that people are concerned about inflation, and we understand that. But one of the things that I want to point out is the fact that inflation isn't the only pocketbook issue that are on the minds of older Americans right now. So it's an election season. So as you yeah. can imagine, ARP does a ton of polling. And um, we polled, what, is the, what are the top three concerns that you have that you want to see candidates address? Number one. Social Security, 82%. It's always number one. I mean, that's this is, these are bread and butter issues. Number two, Medicare at 75%. And number three, the cost of prescription drugs at 69%. So um, my unsolicited advice, if candidates are out there uh, listening, are, is, you know, talk about inflation. That makes sense. You know, give, give people your solution. But don't forget about Social Security, Medicare, and prescription drugs because those are the, on the minds of older voters. And of course, older voters vote yes. and they often determine the outcome of elections. So <laughs> lastly, I'll say, you know, we're always collecting this information. I would love to hear from our callers, of course, you know, uh, does this poll make sense to them? What's on their minds? And uh, if they call in and let us know, they have a chance to win one of those coolers. Yeah, I love it. I really love getting a chance to have a conversation like this. And we get to celebrate tonight, Sean, yeah. some yeah. news that is incredibly beneficial yeah. for all Americans. We know that prescription drugs have been a top issue for AARP for a long sure. time now. You've been working hard for years to get a handle yeah. on the skyrocketing costs for seniors. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, this just happened. Your hard yeah. work has paid yeah. off. Tell us about the big win. Yeah. For Americans 65 and older. Well, um, you know, help is on the way yes. as we talk about inflation. And and there's some uh, parts of the Inflation Reduction Act that will happen in 2023 that are extremely important. But I just really want to thank our members and volunteers and people out there that have been fighting for years. Um, I've been around long enough at ARP when we passed adding a prescription drug benefit to Medicare, which was a huge change. So 
a lot of these changes we've been advocating for almost 20 years on. So it's a tw you know 20 years of advocacy, people talking with their members of Congress, sharing how prescription drug costs outpace inflation. And so that's a big driver for our inflationary costs. So help is on the way, folks. Uh, in 2023, folks who uh, take insulin, uh, they'll be capped. Copays will be cap capped at $35 per month. There'll be free vaccines. Uh, in 2024, there'll be limits on out-of-pocket spending on prescription drug costs of $2,000. That's huge. That is huge. And we've long advocated allowing Medicare to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies to reduce costs. The idea of bulk purchasing, you know, and, and the huge purchasing power of Medicare, they will be able to lower rates, uh, cost of prescription drugs starting in 2026 with 10 approved drugs. And then it gets more drugs that will be added to the list each year. And, and Brad, I, I know there's some other significant changes to that, but... I mean, we need to talk about help is on the way. Yeah, we do. And, you know, I'll just add the insulin thing is such a big deal. Oh, because it's huge. At, at the Iowa State Fair um, one year, we had people fill out their prescription drug mm -hmm. stories, their personal stories. And we had 2,500 people at the Iowa State Fair at our booth fill out their prescription drug stories. I would say roughly 80% were related to insulin. Wow. And the fact that... Mm -hmm. They couldn't afford their insulin or they had to cut back on their insulin or they had to make choices between insulin and food. Yeah. So the fact that that's going to get capped is a huge deal and it's a credit to our volunteers out there. You know, and another part to that, there's, there's still an advocacy opportunity because this is capping insulin costs, co-pays for people on Medicare. But we need to urge Congress to make sure everyone can share on those cost savings yep. and extend it to anyone. Yeah, because they're still yeah. paying the exactly. high prices. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if you have a child or you're under 65 yeah. uh, with high uh, diabetes, high, high in insulin costs, there's some advocacy, advocacy work to be done. And some states have passed some caps on insulin. So either on the state legislature or U.S. Congress, there's that opportunity. And, um, you know, another big, another big driver that many of our folks talk about are the high cost of hearing aids. Yes. And so can you believe Congress passed a bipartisan bill in 2017 and FDA approved recently and starting in the middle of next month, folks would be able to purchase over-the-counter hearing aids and could save thousands of dollars. So if you have you know, minimum hearing loss or, or moderate, um, this could be definitely an additional savings for folks who have hearing loss. Uh, I, I really am. I'm just so touched that you were able to do this. Um, I think about my mom. I think about myself. Oh, I think yeah? about my child. You know, we're all going to reap the benefits of the hard work that, like you said, has been happening for 20 years, for two decades now. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. More work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Happy to do it. <laughs> okay, well, we are going to pause for a quick break, but stay with us. I want to make sure you have the number to call. It's 877-283-7570. We would love to hear from you tonight. Inflation is going up. We know our viewers are smart, though. How are you saving money right now? How are you getting by? Let us know. Maybe your tip can help somebody else. We'll be right back with more Rural America Live with AARP after this. Surviving a household financial emergency takes preparation and goal setting. Here are three tips to help you save for a rainy day and avoid a financial disaster. To build your emergency savings, set up a separate account and give it a name, one that you connect with emotionally, such as Lifeboat. The goal is to motivate you to save and discourage you from dipping into it for non-emergencies so that those dollars are there when you need them. It's not enough to just open a savings account. You must feed it regularly so it can grow. The best way to do that is to arrange for regular automatic deposits from your checking account or from your paycheck. Doing so makes increasing your emergency fund easier and takes little effort as well. Try to free up funds to add to your account. By looking closely at your monthly bills, you might see ways to trim costs. If so, put them towards your savings. For more ways to reach your financial goals, go to aarp.org slash money map. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We are so glad that you have joined us tonight. We are focused on Rural Money Matters. And we've got five coolers to give away. You could be a winner tonight. So pick up the phone. The lines are open. Give us a call at 877-283-7570. 
and join the conversation. How are you keeping your finances in line right now? Maybe you've returned to work after a brief retirement or you know somebody who has. We'd love to hear your story tonight. Please give us a call, 877-283-7570. Our phone lines are open now, and you might be a winner. Joining us once again, I'm here with Sean Voskel from AARP Oklahoma and Brad Anderson from AARP Iowa. And joining us now from St. Paul, Minnesota, another great state tonight. You know him. Economic journalist and author, it's Chris Farrell. This is now your third time joining us on the show. Welcome back, Chris. We're so glad you're with us. Oh, I'm honored to be here, and I, I always enjoy, enjoy the show a lot. <laughs> well, it's you know what? We're going to get a lot of information unpacked here in a little bit <laughs> of time. So, yeah, and our viewers are going to benefit. We're all going to learn something from one another tonight. And Chris, you keep a really close eye on how the economy is doing. We know that many people left the job market during COVID. We all dubbed it the great resignation and many retired earlier than they may have wanted to. But a percentage of those workers are returning to the workforce now, some to replace income that was lost during the economic downturn. However, that's not the case for everybody. What trends are you noticing? So there are a couple of trends going on. As you just mentioned, I mean, look, we have inflation. We're doing this show about the high prices of the grocery and gas, everything like that. And that's one of the reasons why people are going back to work. They're unretiring. But the other thing is we have this incredible labor market. Um, the unemployment rate ticked up a little bit to 3.7%, but essentially unemployment is around a half century low. And we're in a situation where employers are looking for workers. And so, you know, people are thinking about, well, you know, it's good to have some money coming in and, you know, I, I kind of want to be around some people. You know, the workplace is a community. There are people you like, there are people you don't like, you get the gossip with people, you know? And so many people who retired or were forced out of work, they're kind of pushed out during uh, the pandemic or they're nervous about going to work because of the pandemic are coming back to work and they're coming back into a market where employers are just much more willing to hire than they are normally. <laughs> and and they want that retention as well, so they're maybe a little bit nicer yeah. to their employees. <laughs> a little bit. I've, I've noticed And we that. have seen it, people getting pay raises and benefit increases, and I think a greater willingness to work with people that have some skill and some knowledge. You know, okay, you only want to work part-time, maybe we can negotiate a deal here. Yeah, it's really an interesting time. And yeah, you brought up uh, maybe some people are just bored. COVID really yeah. <laughs> won't force into isolation. It showed us it's nice to be able to get out there and communicate in a workplace environment sometimes. And Sean, unplanned expenses, like we just heard about from Chris, they're yeah. hitting people all over the place. But you have a resource that can actually help yeah. people tackle these sorts of events. Tell us about it. The AARP Money Map. Ooh. I Doesn't like that name. sounds good? <laughs> I like it too. It's got a great uh, resource. We've got a great website that really helps people deal with debt, financial goals, and budgeting. Um, and sometimes people just need a little help planning for unexpected financial events. So that's why the ARP Money Map is for you. It's a total free, then you don't have to be a member, uh, but it's a great way to create a strategy. Look at all the great resources that are available. But if you need that first start in setting your budget, this is a great tool for you to use. Yeah, I love that. There's so many great tools. If you go to aarp.org slash aarp live, I mean, We've you're going to find listed. some great tools. Yeah, well, and a lot of people pay a lot of money for financial planners out there. Yeah, and so do. this really is a great financial planning tool. Um, and it's nice that it's totally free. You don't have to be a member. And, you know, there, we have a wealth of resources, as you mm -hmm. know, on our ARP website. So aarp.org search around, but this money map tool is terrific. Yeah, yeah, you can save money just by spending a half hour to an hour on that website and reading about all the <laughs> tips they have money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've got right? great calculators for folks to determine what kind of, what their benefits would look like in retirement, uh, whether it's Social Security or, or, you know, how to save that for that nest egg. So uh, great stuff. I love it. Okay, we are going to go to the phones yes. in just a moment. I do want to bring you back into the conversation, Chris, though, before we do so, because what kind of questions are you looking for from our viewers tonight? Well, one of the things I, I always love learning about tips. You know, people are really smart when it comes to saving money in the sense of, you know, my I, I don't want to be spending this much for food, so how do I, you know, feed my family and, you know, 
but but be budget conscious. And so I'm just really interested in the ways people are figuring out how not to spend that much when it looks like, I mean, every month that you look at the consumer price index, when it comes out, some prices are coming down. But overall, we've been living through a year where prices have been increasing and quite a few of them by with some real momentum behind them, such as food. So what I really, one of the things I really want to learn is how are people you know, navigating this. And I have a feeling we'll get a lot of wisdom. Yeah. And then the other thing I'm sort of curious about, just not to go, but where's your biggest risk people are facing? You know, is it too much credit card debt? Are you worried about the job market? I mean, what is it that people are really concerned about? Oh, those are great. great. Okay. Yeah, give us a call. Let us know. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. And with that, we're going to go right to the phones. Lou from Iowa joins oh. us tonight. All right. Thanks for joining us. Lou, go right ahead. Lou, are you on? Yes. Uh, I would like to know if there's going to be a raise in benefits for um, after the first of the year. Social Security. And uh, how, how does this compare with uh, taking care of the inflation, amount of inflation? comment i i never planned on this but when i bought my latest vehicle i didn't realize that e85 was anything for me but uh when you spend two dollars and seventy cents a gallon for gas rather than four and a half it matches up quite a quite a bit yeah well, that's a good tip hmm. True. Yeah. So um, in terms of the Social Security, yes, it's going to be a big increase uh, that gets announced in October. I believe that's right, uh, Brad or Sean. Yeah. Gets yeah. announced in October because it takes the um, the three months of the, the consumer price index, average of the consumer price index for the three months of the third quarter. And right now, the number, the calculation that's out there is that it's going to probably be somewhere around eight and a half, eight point seven percent be in that range. There was a before we got the latest consumer price index number, there was some thought that it might be at 9%, but now it looks like it's going to be in the high 8% range. And by the way, I just think uh, the E885, um, that's a good way to save money. <laughs> <laughs> We're all watching the prices at the pump that's these true. days. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. And Lou, by the way, you are a winner tonight of a high-quality cooler. Congratulations to you, sir. Angie from Alabama oh, joins okay. us now. Thanks for joining us, Angie. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, I have a question, if you might help, with letting us know how to access dental vision insurance. Um, that's not offered by Medicare. Too many commercials on TV are misleading. Could you help with that, please? The only tip that I know of is people who aren't aware, there are food banks out there that will help. You just have to check in your area and see what's available. So, uh, Brad and Sean, you probably know a lot more about this than I do. Uh, when I've looked at it, for many people looking at Medicare Advantage plans, will oftentimes uh, have some sort of vision or dental plan tied into the overall plan if you go with, with Medicare Advantage. I know that a number of uh, insurance companies, insurance companies that I use, I'm constantly getting uh, emails from them offering uh, dental insurance. Um, so. I think Medicare Advantage is one of the ways that people have been picking up on vision and dental since it tends to be packaged in the Medicare Advantage. There are, by the way, there are big questions about whether or not you should go with Medicare Advantage versus traditional Medicare. There's some real trade-offs there, but in terms of dental and vision, it's also often part of the package. Yeah, and then there's questions, do you get a supplement? Well, <laughs> there's and, so and, many questions. Right. And, and that's a, a great yeah. tease because starting October 15th, Medicare enrollment starts. Yes. And so this is a great time to reevaluate what changes you may need to make or what coverage that, that you want to, to accept. But, you know, I, I think that idea of adding vision dental is out there. Congress actually looked at adding it to a package, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. 
but it did not stay in. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is the way for us to advocate and add these. These are huge uh, additional benefits that people deserve help on. Yeah, but it is on the table, it sounds like yes, it's been it proposed. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, and another great resource, by the way, if your state has it, which every state does, is the uh, SHIP, S-H-I-I-P, uh, State Health Insurance Information Program. And so this is a volunteer-based program, totally unbiased, but if you have any questions Correct. about Medicare, uh, Medicare Advantage, is this plan right for me? Does it provide dental? You know, what am I losing when I get this plan? Uh, SHIP is just a terrific resource, so give them a call. And uh, that's why when, when Chris said, you probably know more about this than I do, uh, I know enough to recommend SHIP. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I know enough to recommend AARP. Well, so, I right mean, and you can yeah. also get in touch with your local AARP office, and then someone like you will help will help out. I love that. I love that about AARP. Okay. Jerry from Missouri oh. is our next winner tonight. Congratulations, Great. Jerry. Go right ahead. Yeah. I Fortunately, I have a pension and Social Security and I have a little money saved. I think I'm good till I die. But I'm just wondering how long are these people going to blame all these, you know, blame inflation on the pandemic? They're blaming everything on the pandemic, and the shortage of people causes everything to go up, and people have to go without because they can't afford it. How, how can they change this? Yeah, so you're entering an area about it. So I think, you know, there's lots of debates what's behind the inflation that we're seeing. And, you know, the pandemic is a big part of it because the pandemic was an enormous disruption to the economy. And we went down really fast and we bounced back up really fast. And this demand for labor and you had the supply chain issues, which are still going on. Um, you had a lot of stimulus. So a lot of factors came together to drive prices higher. The thing is about whatever you feel about what is behind inflation, how durable it is, how deeply entrenched it is in the economy. I think one of the things that you can take away from the current environment right now is that the Federal Reserve is going to lean strongly against inflationary pressures. The, the real question then becomes, how big a price are we going to pay in terms of economic activity and most importantly in terms of employment? But I think that the Fed has been remarkably consistent in recent months, including Fed uh, Chairman Jerome Powell, a lot of the Federal Reserve Bank presidents, a lot of the Fed governors, you know, they may disagree a little bit on the margins about how aggressive they'd be, but I think they've been incredibly cons consistent. And one of the things that we do know is that the Fed can bring inflation down. The big issue is at what price? Yeah, we don't want to start seeing people losing jobs, and that's kind of no. what we've all been holding yeah. on, watching for. So you bring up some really great points there. We're going to go back to the phones. Patricia of Arkansas oh, joins us now. Yeah, ah, look at that. <laughs> Patricia, thanks for joining us. Go right ahead. Yes, my question is, why isn't there more help for senior citizens with food stamps? They are only receiving anywhere from 10 to $25 a month for food stamps because they don't have dependents, okay? They need it more than a lot of these young people. And I understand why the government can't provide more food stamps for the elderly because they really need Yeah. And one of the things that I think was mentioned earlier uh, when you were doing the video, which is the increase in the, you know, people going to food pantries. Uh, I think, Brad, you were talking about it in Iowa, the increase, people going to, to food pantries, using the various resources that are out there, um, Meals on Wheels, you know, all the, the whole, I think this is fair to say, the food system is really strained. And prices have gone way have gone up a lot. People are struggling who are living on the margin on a fixed income or are living on a low and unstable income. And you know, it really is causing enormous strain on household budgets. And so there's no uh, minimizing. I don't know too much about you know the the ins and outs of the food stamps and in terms of but I do know that when food stamps were made more um, generous, uh, right during at the beginning, toward the beginning of the pandemic, it really did pay off 
and a lot of people are struggling. And so food is one of the big issues right now in an inflationary economy where you really do see the impact of higher prices. And I think, Chris, just to add on a little bit more, yeah, uh, I think there's like 14 million uh, older Americans who qualify for SNAP, the, this, the Supplemental uh, Nutrition Assistance Program, that aren't taking advantage of it. And that could be up to $200 per month in additional food assistance. And, and again, uh, check with your area-wide aging agency because some of those food programs aren't aren't means tested. So um, you don't have to just be low income. And so don't leave that money on the table and uh, take advantage of it, especially now when people need it the most. Yeah. And, you know, even in rural areas where you have to travel country roads, Meals on Wheels will it's, deliver. So it's worth checking out. Good. It's isolationism. Keeps them out of uh, nursing homes. I love it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go back to the phones. Dick from Kentucky joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Dick. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, am I on the air now? You yes, are. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Well, I think uh, they answered the question that Lou answered, and uh, that's about all I have. Uh, of course, uh, living on Social Security and uh, a, a little uh, retirement uh, is quite difficult to maintain a house, which I'm tickled to death that it's paid for, and uh, my car... I owe four more thousand dollars on that, but the, the cost of food is unbelievable, unbelievable. And I live in the poverty-stricken area of eastern Kentucky, and uh, living on twenty-five hundred, twenty-eight hundred dollars a month, it's extremely difficult. But they answered the question when uh, Lou answered the question, uh, so. Uh, that takes care of me. Yeah. <laughs> snap. Check out Snap benefits. Snap. And just uh, if I can, just to add one thing off what Dick was saying, um, you know, more and more people are going into their retirement years, being on Social Security, and still having a mortgage. And there can be some good reasons for that. But I think that when it comes to the old traditional advice about pay off your mortgage, go into retirement it really does make a difference for most households that they don't have that obligation. There are plenty of other expenses that go with owning a home. We all know that. Maintaining the home, paying your property taxes. But I think not, you know, as, he, as Dick mentioned, that you know, one of the things that's helping him along is that he owns his home. Well, one thing I want to add, too, with regards to what Dick was saying, was this is why Social Security ranks number one in our yeah. polling, because people like Dick right. depend on this. And Social Security takes keeps 21,700,000 Americans out of poverty every year. I mean, wow. just think about that. This is a very, very important program, especially to folks like Dick in, in some of these rural parts of America. And it's been around for 87 years. Social Security has never missed a payment, not one time. And so this is why Americans want to make sure that, you know, in an election year, candidates are addressing Social Security and frankly, that we talk about the need to strengthen Social Security because, as we've seen, 2035 comes around, that trust fund um, is going to be insolvent unless Congress acts. And so it's something that we should be talking more about. I mean, well, it's tough because we're all paying into it, you know, and for decades. And you've and earned those benefits. That's it. You've yeah. earned those benefits, which is what makes it really tough when those benefits aren't stretching as much as they used to because inflation's going up. So. That's what we're talking about tonight. And, and uh -huh. I love the tips that we're getting. Please call in and share your cost-saving tips with us tonight. 877-283-7570. Join our conversation. We'll go back to the phones in a moment. But, Brad, we have some tips that you have for us <laughs> to we, make it saving a little easier. Well, if you're into saving money, are you into saving oh, money? Oh, indeed I am. <laughs> okay. John? You're, it's hard. Okay, it's hard. it is hard. But let's, I've got some tips for you. Okay. So... Um, Here's some tips. Number one is automate. So put that saving or paying down debt on autopilot. Set up an automated monthly withdrawal from your checking account to your investment account or to pay down your debt. So really important to put that on autopilot. Number two is if you get a raise, pay yourself most of that raise. So what does this mean? If you get, say, $140, take the $40, go have fun with it, go out to dinner, go to a movie. Uh, but put $100 into your retirement fund because then you're paying yourself and you're paying your future. And number three, 
reframe, and this is an important one, reframe how you think about those big purchases. So uh, if you're per- the type of person that you have to buy a new car every three years, um, what you need to do, this is a mental thing. You need to think through, okay, well, how is that going, to, is that going to delay my retirement? And by how much can I go five, six, seven years and maybe not even have a car payment? Um, that stuff adds up. And so rethink those big purchases. Those are a couple tips. Maybe Sean will have some tips down the road. Hopefully. That's right. <laughs> I think he will. That's a little setup, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed it is. But I, will, I will say, speaking of setup, if others, we, we talked about 99 ways to save on the last show, and some of the best ways to save came from our callers. Yes. So remember there was that caller that mentioned um, air conditioning, put a box fan near the air conditioning event, and it'll cool the entire upstairs of the house. I did that. I went home and I, I did that, and it totally worked. And so if callers have additional ways to save money, um, for me personally, I'm asking you to call in to the show <laughs> and uh, share those tips with us so we can learn. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Sam had a great tip last time he was talking about detergent. You don't have to have the hot water anymore because it's so high quality now. You can wow. wash it on cold and still get the same results that you used to with the hot. I didn't hot. know he washed his clothes. <laughs> That was good to know. No, that was a great, a great show. And so, yeah, we love your tips. Keep those coming. Diane from Nevada joins us next. Thank you, Diana. Or Diane, go right ahead. Yes. I just have a money-saving tip. Not as good as the last ones talked about. But I was in retail for a lot of years with grocery stores. And one of the things that I did notice with customers, especially the elderly, and talking to them, is that they would come to the store every day because they were bored. Yeah. They had mm-hmm. nothing to do, so to go shopping every day for their meals gave them something to do. Then you do a lot of impulse buying. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you end up buying things that you don't need to spend money on. Uh, meals, steak every night, no. But I saw that a lot, uh, where they'd come into the store for something to do so they did their shopping every day. So if you could lay out a meal plan, write it down for the week, go to the store, buy what you need, you find out that you uh, don't spend as much as you think. So it's just a, a little tip to pass on. Thank Good you. Tip. Plan those meals. I like that, plan the meals. And, you know, even if you're going every day, write down what you're going to get. Yeah. And just stick to it. So if you want to wander around, you want to, you know, you want to go to the grocery store, you want to talk, fine. But you know, if you write down what you're going to get and you stick to it, because one of the things about all grocery store, all retailers, they have figured out how to get, you know, get you to do that impulse purchase right by the cash register. Oh, I could just, you know, and that is on a, you know, percentage basis, like really expensive. So if you write it down and you stick to your list, you will. You won't be wasting money. Yeah, and don't go in hungry, right? That's, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> you know, if we get if we have time tonight, I like for Chris to address it when it's appropriate. But you know, thinking about a lot of our callers um, who who you know you've heard that land rich, you know, cash poor, poor yeah. and so they've got their uh, you know their assets tied up uh, in the real estate or, or your home or or tractors, livestock, um, and so you know. What advice is there for folks looking uh, to fight inflation and, and retire who, who, you know, their disposable incomes tied up in, in land and farm equipment? Yeah, they don't have a farm lot of equipment. liquid, yep. yeah, a lot of liquid cash. Yeah. I mean, I would, you know, so if you did take the homeowner, because I think the farmer is, is a different situation because yeah. about, about the business and the family and what's going on in the farm economy. But if you think about the homeowner, it's a really tough question and it's such an important question. You know, where are you going to live? And there's a, you know, and I think the adage is still true, it, is that the house that you raised your children in is is probably too big. And it's not just that it's too big, it's that the the property the property insurance is more the maintenance is more the electric bill is more and so i really do think about uh, taking your equity and downsizing 
so that you can tap into that equity and you can continue to live in the place that you want to and age in place if that's what you want to do, but it's in a smaller home and those savings accumulate. There's also this thing called a reverse mortgage. And the reverse mortgage for a long time was not a very good product. And it's still a niche product. It's not for everybody. But there have been regulatory changes that have improved the product. And so I think it's worth looking at a reverse mortgage. For most people, I'd say it's probably not the right way to go. But if you are asset rich and you want to stay in your home, you really do want to understand the reverse mortgage. And one of the things why, why I'm so cautious with the reverse mortgage is even the term itself is confusing. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's one of those things that you know, you're required to take a class. You can't understand a reverse mortgage taking a class. You actually really need to have a lot of help. You have to think it through. You have to decide, is this going to work for you? But I think you've really hit on where are you going to live? How are you going to tap into the equity of your home? And what you don't want to do is take on debt, tap into your equity that way. Or at least that's what I would, I'd put that at the bottom of your list. It's just, I don't want to do a, you know, you shouldn't ever do that. But for most people, taking on debt would be at the bottom of your list. Especially at an adjustable rate, if you're taking out a loan in in today's climate, (laughs) right? (laughs) Um, We're going to go back to the phones. Marie of New York joins the conversation now. Thanks for joining us, Marie. Go right ahead. Hi. Yes, I was wondering if someone could explain a few things. Um, I'm a senior, but I also do volunteer work with seniors. And whenever there is an increase in Social Security, um, they're happy, but they never really get to see it. The Medicare goes up. They get a decrease. Some of their food stamps are taken away. Um, Some of the seniors that are on rental assistance, their rent goes up. And they can't get ahead because of... Everything is taken away, and also the people that do get more in Social Security get more of an increase, and the lower income and poverty people that are on Social Security, even Social Security disability, don't get very much. And I was just wondering if someone could explain how that works and how they decide how much everybody gets and why taken away when they do get it towards Medicare, their food stamps are decreased, and all that. Thank you very much for your help. You know, you've touched on one of the one of the most troubling aspects in our economy and the way that it's structured, and the way we have our taxes structured, and Social Security and, and other things. When you're living on a, on, a, on a low income and you're getting various services, you can end up with an, what is essentially an enormous tax. Uh, you get sort of these notches and it does reduce your benefits and people who are working can face this issue. People on social security can face issue on net on average, the increase in social security is a really good thing. This is a, this is a terrific thing. Uh, This is what social security is there for. The increase is, uh, you know, driven by changes in inflation, cost of living. So this is overall a good thing, but, when you're living on a lower income and you're taking a variety of services, it can really, you can really get nicked by the increases. All right. Thank you so much for that call, Marie. And you are a winner, my friend. Congratulations to you. That leaves a line open for you tonight, 877-283-7570. We talked about some tips a little bit earlier on. I heard that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you're ready to deliver. Well, That's what I'm hearing in my let's, ear let's anyway. Get <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's set that goal and, and, and really tell people about it. And, and that's really important. You make that declaration that, um, you know, I'm going to save this money. This is my goal for retirement. Um, and so you'll, have, you'll feel that more pressure if you tell someone and, and someone's kind of that, that partner to keep you honest. I think the fifth one is use cash. Oh. Yes, we still have money that folds. And so uh, <laughs> handing over the cash really gives you that immediate finality. Uh, the purchase is done and it's over and it may kind of, once you're using cash and see that it directly leaves your hand, it may make you think about spending more of it. Yeah. <laughs> I will say I've got a, I've got a, my, I went uh, fishing with my dad recently and oh. we rented a boat and my dad only uses cash and oh, yeah. he pulled out $250 and <laughs> normally you'd think, if, you know, rent a boat, $250 yeah. not, you, on a card. When I saw that cash leave his hand, I'm like, do we really need this boat? I mean, yeah. that is, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a totally different feeling to watch the cash. It's hard for it to leave the yes. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you sure? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, because you're right. 
prices are going up, so you are spending yeah. a lot more, even for a boat excursion. Yeah. 200 bucks. Yeah. You know, the goodness. last caller <laughs> talked about the Social Security and Medicare, um, also premiums going up. So we won't know yet what those Medicare premiums go, uh, what they'll be when they go up. But again, I would recommend and let folks know there's some great savings to the Medicare savings program, the, you know, extra help subsidy that will help uh, seniors uh, with co pay copays, lower prescription drug costs. And so I'd really, as Brad mentioned earlier, your insurance department has that uh, senior health insurance counseling program and really talk to them, do I qualify for this extra help, the low income subsidies uh, to help offset you know, those those premium increases in Medicare. Yes. So take advantage of those. Yeah, and find out because sometimes you don't know. You might think that you don't qualify, but you just don't know. So right. And they've asking. gone up, yeah, the threshold. Right. So, so again, you may not last year, but you will this year. I mm -hmm. love that. And yeah, and like Chris was saying, it may go up quite a bit. So we'll see. Okay, we're going to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we still have a cooler to give away. So give us a call, 877-283-7570. We'd love to hear from you tonight. And you could be a winner. We'll be right back with more Rural America Live with AARP right after this. Saving for retirement can be challenging. Increasing the amount you save can be even harder. Here are four ways you can boost your retirement savings, adding financial security later in life. If your employer has a matching retirement savings program, make sure to sign up. It's one of the easiest ways to build your retirement nest egg. You can set up the amount you want to contribute as a direct deposit each pay period. Save part of a raise or bonus toward retirement. In most cases, you can set this up to happen automatically, making it easier to accomplish. Prioritize this savings goal over all others. If you need extra funds to pay for a big ticket items, consider tapping into other resources rather than your retirement savings. Free up extra funds to add to your nest egg by trimming expenses. This might be easier said than done, but every little bit helps. To learn more ways to save for retirement, go to aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We still have a Yeti cooler to give away, so let's go right to the phones. Once again, the number to call is 877-283-7570. We would love to hear from you. Margaret of West Virginia joins us. Thanks for joining us, Margaret. Go right ahead. Yes, I have a question about... Um, I know that... Uh, Oh, come on. My brain just went cold on me. Oh, it's okay. Uh, Was it Social Security? Social Security <laughs> has been tapped to pay for other programs for years because they had money in the account, and therefore we'll, we'll take some of that and we'll pay for this other is that still being taken, is there still taps on Social Security money being taken out for other things? So, as far as I know, the answer to that is no. I mean, the issue with Social Security, really, and what I can't remember was Brad or Sean mentioned, but we've known, we've known for a long time, um, that come 2035, there's going to be uh, the shortfall. Now, it is important. Yes, it, technically, it's called Social Security is going to be insolvent. It's not a good thing, but you're still going to be able to pay about 80 percent, 79, 80 percent of benefits, even after 2035. We just don't want people to lose that much of their benefit. So the, the issue with Social Security in terms of um, its financial solvency is not the money being used for other purposes. The real issue here is that um, we actually need to, to increase the funding that is going into Social Security. I have recognized that there's a big de debate about how to do it, but Social Security is fundamental. I mean, you look at the poll uh, that was talked about earlier in the program, Social Security is fundamental. Uh, people really rely on it. You can tell it from all our phone calls here. Personally, I just wish that Congress would get to this quickly so that people can, uh, we can sort of stop this conversation that some people seem to be having that Social Security won't be there when they retire. Social Security will be there when they retire. That's about the safest forecast you can make. 
but but we do need to close the funding gap there and that's the issue that i think uh we all need to focus on yeah great thank you so much for that call we appreciate it up next is carolyn from kentucky thanks for joining us go right ahead yes i want to thank aarp and rfd for having this program um uh, we use a regular supplement because we have health issues, and with that, we don't have any co-pays. But it doesn't seem quite right that people with advantage that pay low premiums get the benefits, and we're just left out of that. So, the you know, the, between traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage, now... Um, Brad and Sean, you, you may know more. From what I have looked at, um, you know, Medicare Advantage is uh, at a lower cost up front, but depending on your health issues, it can be the much higher cost option if you develop real health issues. Traditional Medicare can be more expensive a little bit up front, um, but traditional Medicare really does make a big difference if you end up dealing with longer term care issues. So, um, Personally, I'm a big fan of traditional Medicare because I think the real concern that you want is to make sure that if like really bad things happen to you on your health front, that you're actually really pretty, that you're well covered, uh, and that's that's where you really need to be concerned. Well, and, and one of the things that SHIP recommends mm -hmm. is every year check your coverage, and so determine okay, do I have a new pre-existing condition? So maybe do I need a new plan? You know, you can call SHIP and um, they would help you walk you through that, but you should do that annually. And I have a family member who um, had a heart condition. Well, his Medicare Advantage plan wasn't great for his heart condition, so he had to switch plans. But you can do that, you know, check on those plans every year and, and make sure that they're the right plan for you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Really important information. Yeah. And congratulations to you, Carolyn. Thanks for joining us. You are a winner tonight. Jeannie is our next caller. Jeannie, you're also a winner. Congratulations to you. Go right ahead. Um, <clears throat> mine is more of a, a, a money-saving thing, right. um, whereby I've done this for um, the over 50 years that I've been married, where everything is um, written down. Um, and also, I used only the ads from the papers for the sales, and my whole life revolves around only getting something from a sale, and <laughs> if I don't have money for it, I don't buy it. That's good. Um, That's great. And by the way, I love the RFD channel. It's my very favorite. Uh, great. That's great. I think that, that's absolutely wonderful. What a terrific discipline. And just to pull out one thing that uh, Jeannie was saying is, you know, a lot of us can feel out of control. These prices are going up. Uh, where's my money going? And so, you know, if you are having that feeling, you know, she was mentioning that, you know, she's written everything down over the years. Another way of saying she has, has a budget. She knows what's coming in. She knows what's going out. You don't have to do it uh, every year if you don't want to. That's not the, the, the uh, but you can for a period of time when you want to get your finances under control, you know, creating a budget, establishing a budget early in the show, talking about ARP, they got the, the free budgetary help that you can draw on um, uh, in terms of creating your own budget. But that just, that information really makes it easier for you then to make some decisions about where's your money going, where do you want your money going, where are you going to pull back, where are you going to increase your spending. So at a time when so many people feel out of control, embrace that budget, and a budget doesn't cost you anything to make. You just go to that uh, website at ARP, and you know, and you can just use that as a template, and if you don't even want to do it on a computer, you just want to do it with pen and paper, that's fine. <laughs> The old-fashioned way. Right. That's, that's right. right. You might pull out a calculator while you're at it. Congratulations <laughs> on 50 years of marriage. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's amazing. Great. Yeah, I, I really think that we've been getting such high-quality calls tonight. We thank you so much for joining our conversation. I think we have time for one more. We're going to go to Georgia. Great. Thomas joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Thomas. Go right ahead. Hi, guys. How are you? Great. Good. Thank you. Good. I have a question. Um, I'm only 26, but when can I start for AARP, and is it all for um, all for all ages? 
Ah. Yes, it is. <laughs> associate plant. Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> associate member at any age. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thomas, thanks for joining us. Yes. You know what? That's awesome. I You're know. a 26 year old. That's right. At the end of the show, that yeah. means well, I'm, I'm not thinking he watched the whole thing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, there was a viral TikTok where a 20 something joined AARP and then he listed all the savings, you know, that he got by joining. And yeah, and, yeah so we, we have plenty of younger members out yeah. there, but you can join it at any age. I love that. And you know what? You're fighting for all ages. And I'm, like we were talking about earlier, this is such huge news about the prescription drug costs coming down. In fact, do you want to just reiterate one more time for us, Sean, how quickly we're going to start to see those savings? Because people are going to have to wait for years. Right. And this is for Medicare, folks who are on Medicare, starting in uh, next year, 2023, a $35 cap on co-pays for insulin. Amazing. Uh, free vaccines. 2024, the, ma the maximum you'll pay is $2,000 on prescription drug costs of out-of-pocket. And so that's significant savings. For a year, yeah. And then we'll see savings in 2026 or 2025. 2026 on um, negotiations with Medicare and the pharmaceutical oh, companies. I love it. I, I mean, it's just, it's yeah. so, it's such good news for generations to come, for generations like Thomas. Penal <laughs> there's penalties on pharmaceutical companies who raise their prices more than inflation. Yeah, that so, happens immediately. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should also talk about over-the-counter hearing aids because yes. this is it, this is a sea change when it comes to hearing aids. So hearing aids typically cost about four thousand dollars, some three, four thousand dollars. You are now going to have products out there for uh, mild to moderate hearing loss mm -hmm. that could be around eight hundred dollars. Yeah. So these are significant savings. Obviously, they're still expensive, but they're regulated by the FDA and they're legitimate products. And um, this is something again you had mentioned. Earlier, this is bipartisan. I yeah, mean, it's it's Congress <laughs> actually worked to, to get this done, and so it's 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 significant and something AARP has been pushing for a long time. And Chris, I mean, you've been in your position for a long time. Talk about how monumental this is and the lives that are going to change just in the next month when some of this is implemented. Oh, it, I mean, hearing. I mean, and as you know, there are just so many health benefits that come from hearing, being engaged in the world, being to have conversations. And I think, you know, one of the things that we have all become aware during this pandemic, I mean, we knew it before, it was important, but I think the pandemic made it uh, clear to people of all ages is just how debilitating loneliness and social isolation is. And being able to hear is critical to being able to enjoy conversations, listen to TV, all, listen to the radio, all kinds of things. And so this this has been, I mean, part of me is, okay, what took you so long? It yes. was past 2017, <laughs> okay, but I don't wanna, I just, I'm gonna stay positive here and just say I'm really glad that it's happening. Yeah. I, I really am too. The process can be messy sometimes, but we got it done. Yeah, I hear people were paying $800 for insulin in, in some uh, cases, and the prices awful. have come down so much. So, let's, like you said, the fight's not it, over. Let's make it cheaper for everyone. Yes. It's great that folks in Medicare will, will be able to get savings, but let's advocate so uh, these cost savings would passed down to everyone regardless of age you know? oh you know what's great is that we get to join up with you each and every month and so yeah. you keep us up to date with the progress that aarp is making on capitol hill so please continue to do that sure. yeah. <laughs> and please continue to look out for our yeah. senior population and, yeah. and, and all americans because sure. that's really what you're doing and i want to thank you both for joining thank us you. tonight also of course we want to thank chris farrell you are a huge asset to our show chris how can people thank catch you. your radio show or your podcast if they want to find out more so if they go to uh minnesota public radio if they go to my email address is cfarrell at mpr for minnesota public radio dot org and um you know if you put my name into your search engine and put public radio in there you'll see a lot of stuff involved with pbs next avenue which writes article and i write articles for the 50 plus nice well we look forward to having you back on as well thank you for joining us wishing Thanks, you and your Chris. family a beautifully blessed evening